Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all doing great. So today I'm just bringing you this quick video here to discuss uh, a topic that um, I've always found interesting, uh, but I never really got a chance to make a video on this here. Uh, I'm talking about aluminum or copper heat sinks for your VRAM or VRMs. Now, I've always stuck with copper thinking that copper, you know, it absorbs heat better than aluminum, but aluminum at the same time does radiate heat into the air better than copper uh, that's why you you see uh, heat sinks for graphics cards or for cpus being built in you know with a combination of both uh, but today we're going to find out if there are any temperature uh, benefits uh, by using just pure copper on your vrm or pure aluminum so that's what this video is it's all about i hope you guys enjoy it so let's go ahead and uh, get started now All right, so the first thing I'm gonna be doing here is setting up a baseline that we can go off of. Uh, this graphics card here is the AMD HD7870 graphics card. This thing like, like loves to run hot. So this is the perfect candidate for these type of tests. Uh, this is my little infrared uh, thermometer that we're gonna be using today. Um, and uh, it seems to work pretty well for, for this purpose here. Now, uh, you gotta keep in mind that the distance from, the, from your target to the thermometer uh, matters a lot. So we're going to be keeping here a distance uh, of around th three to four uh, inches from the uh, from our target. Uh, here we're going module by module and as you can see here you know the, the temperatures are staying within uh, 53, 54, uh, 56 degrees Celsius here. And um, these are the modules that the two modules that we're going to be uh, testing on. And the third module is going to this it's not going to have a heat sink on it, so we can use that as a comparison, live comparison there as we go. All right, so let's go ahead and get an introduction to what we're going to be working with here today. These are the uh, copper heat sinks that I uh, always buy for this type of. Uh, uh, this type of projects, I guess you want to call it that. Um, they do come uh, with uh, glue pre-applied or uh, you know double-sided tape pre-applied, but uh, we're not going to be using the included uh, glue today. We're going to be replacing that with something else, I think, of better quality, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, these are supposed to be 100%, supposed to be 100% copper, uh, and they do feel you know pretty uh, weighty there, so they pack a little weight on them. And these are my aluminum heat sinks. Uh, these are just the black, just you know, black painted uh, aluminum heat sinks here. So uh, you can feel the difference between the two when you pick them up. You know, aluminum obviously is going to be a little lighter. So, uh, and this here is the M3 tape that I bought also separately. Um, I read some good reviews of this here. It's supposed to have good uh, thermal conductivity. So we're going to be sticking with this instead of the included. Um, glue or tape that comes with the uh, small heat sinks here. I would normally just be using this thermal glue to stick the heat sinks onto the VRAM chips, but after ripping off a few voltage regulators off my GTX 980 Ti by trying to remove these chips off, uh, I'd rather not go that route, I'd rather just stick with the tape. And to my surprise, I found out that there isn't that much difference. So maybe half a degree difference between the glue and the tape. So we're going to be going with the M3 tape here. And hopefully we get uh, similar temperatures as I was getting with the thermal um, glue. But you know what they say. Live and learn. So that's what we're doing today. All right. So what I like to do here is just cut off a little piece big enough for the heat sink, and, uh, the heat sink itself. And then go around with the scissors cutting off all the extra stuff. And by the way, I just wanted to let you guys know that you can find all these materials here on eBay. You know, just uh, take a little time there, you know, surfing through, pay attention to the reviews, pay attention to what people are saying about the seller, um, and take some time to read up on what the seller's uh, saying, you know, what the type of, um, how he's describing the, the material to you guys, because um, uh, some of this stuff here is, it ends up not being what you thought it was by the time you get it so just pay attention to what you guys are buying and who you're buying it from but uh, other than that you know you can get some pretty good stuff off of there uh, I've never had any issues uh, myself so uh, but I have heard of some horror stories so I was just giving you guys a heads up and um, yeah that's all I have to say about that and this stuff here bonds pretty well 
uh, once you attach this heat sink to your VRAM or VRM, it's not going anywhere. And as things begin to heat up, the bond just gets stronger. So don't have to worry about the stuff falling off. But uh, at the same time, they're easily removed. Uh, so that, that is a plus here. All right, so the next thing we need to do here is check for any gaps. Make sure that there is uh, absolute uh, contact there between the, um, the heat sinks and the, uh, the surface you're trying to attach it to. But to, um, to aid in that process, I've, I've gotten some clamps here. They're you know, mostly plastic so that they, they don't uh, damage the graphics card. Uh, now, let's go ahead and uh, take a look and see what the temperatures look like after 10 minutes of running a uh, Unigine Valley Benchmark loop. And we're going to start with the Module 1. And it's, uh, it'll take some time here for me to be able to keep it steady enough right in the center of the first uh, VRAM module there and as you can tell it's hovering around 44 uh, second module is around 40 39 degrees so doing a little better there and then as we swing to the right to the third module you can see the actual temperatures there of around full you know 52 uh, degrees Celsius I have to say that I am pretty impressed with the results here we got 11 degrees in temperature uh, drop here just by adding the uh, copper heat sinks to the VRAM modules that's um, that's a pretty good improvement just by adding these little chips and um, one thing I want to tell you guys once you uh, have used these uh, the, these uh, this tape on uh, one of these heat sinks you don't want to reuse it you want to just uh, you know peel it right off and use uh, another uh, another piece of tape you don't want to keep reusing that stuff because it, it, then you won't have that good contact that you're supposed to have as you would with the freshly applied uh, strip of tape. All right, so let's go ahead and try the aluminum heat sinks and see how well they do. And by the way, I leave the clamp on the heat sinks for about 10 minutes. That should be plenty of time. All right, let's go ahead and take a look and see what type of temperatures we have with the aluminum heat sinks on module one and two. And I'm going to try to get a better angle here with the camera so you guys can see um, I'm aiming right at the center there, right under the, the first uh, VRAM module. You're looking at 45, 46 degrees and module 2 should be around the same, 45, 46. And then we are going to here soon, hopefully, move on to uh, module 3. And that's where you see the temperatures go up to 54 degrees there. And this is a little graph here showing um, what the temperatures look like without the heat sink, with the copper heat sink. Uh, you know, that's 43 degrees Celsius and 45 degrees Celsius with the aluminum heat sinks. The temperature difference between copper and aluminum here is not nothing to lose your mind over. But hey, I'll let you guys uh, decide on that one there. But uh, yeah, that's all I have for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit thumbs up if you did like the video. If not, you know what to do. Subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.